No! You're kidding me! Nope, Amari was serious! How's it going everybody? My name is Mr. Hurricane, welcome back to the Chicago Bears franchise. Today we have the preseason as we go through the four games of exhibition play, taking a look at the key moments and plays of each. I streamed three of the games and played one on my own, but we're going to take a look at these rookies and the year three Chicago Bears. We may have missed out on Amari Cooper, but that did not stop us from putting together an exciting cast of rookies to make up this roster. I'm really excited about this year. I think we have a chance to perhaps make it to the playoffs, but there's a long road ahead of us. The preseason streams were definitely fun. If you want to watch those, they're on my channel, and they are longer streams, and that's why I'm recapping everything here. All the important moments are within this video. And here was the last move we made at the end of the offseason. If you did not see that, we did trade for a tackle. It's Tony Garcia, formerly of the New England Patriots, and he is our new right tackle. But let's get into the highlights of this preseason, opening against the Denver Broncos. And the first thing we saw here in the preseason was Bram Dirth, our first pick in the first round. One of three first round picks, and we know that he's going to be a force in the middle of this defensive line, whether he's playing at defensive end in the 3-4 or sliding inside when we go nickel. There is a home for him on this defense. And now it's Leonard Floyd getting it on the action as we hit Trevor Simeon here early a couple times and take over. We'll bounce around these games as we usually do and just see what stands out. Mitchell Trubisky back after the injury that ended his season last year, connecting with Cameron Meredith for a couple times as they did throughout season two when Meredith had over 70 catches and 1,200 yards. Back to the defense and there is number 95. We're all going to be very familiar with Bram Durth. Here is Benny Cunningham, who played a lot of running back for us last season, did a great job, but now at 29, he has started to regress a little bit. Here is the second-year quarterback, Andrew Leonard, who had a very tough rookie season. He finds Tajay Sharp, who was acquired in the Deion Sims deal. And then on third down, we go to one of our new tight ends. That is Max Williams, who's come over from the Ravens. I like the combo of him and Shaheen a lot. This is Leonard trying to throw to the end zone, and we see some of that inaccuracy that was on display last year in a forgettable rookie season for him. Then it's Benny Cunningham later getting some running room and picking up some good yardage. Cunningham has been really reliable for us. I thought that he would be a great spot starter. He did prove that to be correct. But I know many of us want to see more of number 29 this year. Tariq Cohen's playmaking ability should be a bigger part of the offense this year. I want it to be. Then, throwing inside the 10, we have Kendall Demons, who was one of our late round selections. He was picked in the sixth round, basically to back up Paul Richardson and be that speedy deep threat. This is not really his game right here, making the tough catches and acting like a possession receiver. But I try to give him as many opportunities in different situations. We finish this drive with a touchdown, and number 17 is a playmaker. That's Harlan Regis, the first round pick. It didn't take long for me to be impressed by his skill set. Also on offense, another rookie, C.J. Ross, the third round selection. I could not wait to get the running back onto the field. Number two at quarterback is Jordan Alleman, one of the undrafted rookies I wanted to give a chance as he finds Tajay Sharp coming across the middle. Then Alleman on first down, throwing downfield, and that's Sharp getting open once again. He made a few catches in this first game. And then we go back to C.J. Ross. Great size, he has burst, he can make defenders miss. Unfortunately, this was the last we were able to see of C.J. Ross in the preseason, making just two carries before leaving with an injury. I'll update you on the injury after this game's highlights are over. Broncos going deep later in the game, and this is intercepted by Marcus Cooper, who is still trying to hang on to some playing time here in the cornerback depth chart. Alleman later back to the air and there's Kendall Demons playing more of his role just forcing defenders to keep up with that speed and most of them are not able to. Unfortunately this first game had just the worst accuracy from the quarterbacks. Nobody really stood out and it made it tough to evaluate the receivers without a lot of great looks. 
The defense made some plays. Cliff Averill here getting to the quarterback. He was one of our veteran signings that wasn't very expensive as we attempted to boost this pass rush. Then it's Joey Correa on the move, finding Kendall Demons, and the ball gets ripped out as the Broncos take over. The fumble isn't all that concerning to me. I was happy to see Demons make these catches and get open consistently. Here we go again, getting to Chad Kelly. It's Cliff Averill registering two and a half sacks in his Bears preseason debut. One thing that I think could be really interesting about this year is how we use the linebackers. There is some double A gap pressure applied by Marcus Calhoun, who I want to be our nickel linebacker that specializes in coverage. But there's also the rookie first round selection, Marquis Starling, and you'll see a lot of him in this video. Joey Correa later on the move, and we get a nice block from Demons out in front as Cameron Crane takes the slant and takes it 69 yards to the house. I didn't go for two, so we were risking overtime here in the first preseason game with less than a minute to go. Chad Kelly underneath, and the ball gets jarred free. That's number 53, Marquis Starling. I was a little down on this pick after making it because he wasn't great in coverage, but I ignored his strengths a little too much. He's a fast athletic linebacker and we can certainly find some roles for him. We get Kendall Demons a catch down into field goal range, just trying to get closer, but then a missed throw by Joey Correa and that's just not gonna happen. The Bears cannot win the game here, instead we go to overtime in the preseason. You're not supposed to do this. But the Broncos want to end it as this ball gets deflected by Bryce Callahan. He is still in line to be our nickel corner this year. Then Chad Kelly takes another shot downfield and this gets swatted away by the rookie Verlin Dre. He was a seventh round pick. Unfortunately, the Broncos are still able to get into field goal range and they set up Brandon McManus for the game winning kick. And after playing almost five quarters of preseason football, this game eventually ends. There were a lot of injuries that came from it, however. None major, but severe enough to keep these players out of the rest of the preseason, including Javante McKinney, a backup guard, in addition to C.J. Ross, who is going to miss the next four weeks, which includes week one of the regular season. So not much of an impression from him, but I'm still excited about his skill set. Into the Titans matchup now as Bryce Callahan gives up a pass to the talented Rashard Matthews. And then Danny Trevathan stuffing the run, taking over that role for Jarrell Freeman after missing all of year two. Unfortunately, Titans embarrass us on this opening possession with Corey Davis getting the best of Eddie Jackson. Jackson is not the best safety to line up in man coverage as he is very slow to react to cuts. So we're not going to put him in that situation too often, especially against receivers like Corey Davis. How about the offense for Chicago? Trubisky a little overthrown here and intercepted by Kevin Byard. He's a ball hawk and he seems to always be in the right place at the right time. Here's that throw once again as Trubisky's accuracy is one of our concerns this year. I have him as a focus player. I'm doing everything I can right now to develop him. And then Marcus Mariota. He can run. And there's a reminder of what he can do when you give him a little open space. 41-yard touchdown and the Titans take a commanding lead. Can the Bears get anything going against these Tennessee starters? Well, I know Jordan Howard can as he busts through the second level and into the secondary for a first down run. Always great to have our starting tailback in action. And then Mitchell Trubisky again taking some hits. I want to do a lot more this year with play calling to limit how much contact he's taking because it's ended the first two years of his career. He's missed, I think, seven games. We do move the chains with Jordan Howard and then get the ball to Tariq Cohen. And he's going to be used a lot more as a receiver this season. We've had a lot of trouble in this series with the unblocked defender and not being ready for these blitzes. Unfortunately, Trubisky gets shaken up here, but he was able to return in the following game. It brought Andrew Leonard back into this one though, and his first throw underneath to Paul Richardson who weaves his way through the defense and uses that dangerous speed to find the end zone. I can't wait to see what he can do this year for the offense. He was great last year in nine games. On this third down, a little adjustment there by Harlan Regis and he makes the reception. 
I'm not sure what defenses are going to do when they have to stop both him and Cameron Meredith. There is Adam Shaheen working as the tight end one, a role he hasn't really played in since the first year of the series. He didn't play a ton in year two. And then a missed throw downfield by Leonard that is surely not his strong point. On third down, he shows off the touch as he floats one for Paul Richardson, and he makes the grab into Titan territory. And this is where Leonard really got into a rhythm. I felt like the narrative around him began to change in this second game, making consistent throws, that one to the outside for Paul Richardson. And then we go into the second half, and he shows off the intermediate accuracy, finding Earl Pierce, the tight end, trying to make the roster once again. Leonard 8 for 12 to this point, throws it up to Marky Cole. He wrestles it away from the defensive back, and that is a touchdown. Cole didn't get to play much last year, but maybe he should have. He's just raw in the route running department. We have to improve the intangibles, but he can catch the football, and he can make the tough plays. We turn this preseason game around quite nicely, and then looping all the way around showing that hustle is Marquis Starling. He is our fastest linebacker, and we're going to use that speed to our benefit. Marquis Cole showing he can make more than just the big play later, making the catch on the curl, and then making another great play at the sideline and enduring the contact. Leonard again to Cole, this time it doesn't count. But I'm looking for talent, traits, and abilities in the preseason, not just production. So I'll count it. It's a positive in my book. Later, we get some pressure with Labrice Pringley, another young pass rusher. We definitely need to improve our depth there. Here was a play later with Adrian Amos going after the punter here. He does get a penalty here for taking out the punter right at that plant knee. So the Titans keep it, and it allows us to see Marquis Starling once again. If you want to go outside, my plan is to make sure Marquis Starling is in your way. And if we go outside, I prefer to do so with Tariq Cohen in that speed. Maybe he'll get some wide receiver snaps as well. Tennessee later in the fourth quarter, Newberry. Uh-oh, the pocket collapses around him. He gets sacked by Jonathan Bullard in the final year of his contract. Then on first down, Newberry's going right back to the ground as Carlos Romero gets there. He had four sacks as a rookie. With the injury to C.J. Ross, I wanted to bring in a familiar running back to get some snaps, and he made an early impact. This is Joseph Brookins. He was with us last year, spent the entire season on the practice squad, but I released him prior to this preseason. I didn't think he'd get the carries, but with Ross getting hurt, that opened up his opportunity. Later in the game, we're going to close this out with a Marquis Starling Blitz. I want to use him as a blitzer a lot. He might have like the third most sacks on the team this year, the way I hope to use him. Let's go into game three now. Thank you, Matt Stafford. A leaping interception by Eddie Jackson, and he can take it all the way for a Chicago Bear touchdown. I like our young pair of safeties. They're playmakers. Let's go back to defense. They try to run it here with Theo Riddick, and he gets stuffed by number 98. That is Jalen Egbo, who takes over for Eddie Goldman. And then off play action, we bring the pressure, and down goes Stafford, Marcus Calhoun this time. Mitchell Trubisky back for this game, and he gets intercepted here by Paul Warlow, and he'll do exactly what Eddie Jackson did earlier and tie the game with the pick six. But we'll go right back to the offense, running it up the middle. This is Jordan Howard, breaking to the outside and getting downhill to the 45. Nice run of 19, but Howard gets shaken up. Fortunately, this was not a serious injury. Third and 14 here for the Bears. Later on, it's Mitchell Trubisky. He'll get outside and go back across the body, finding Adam Shaheen right in the middle of the field. I knew I had to get him some targets in this third game just to see how confident I was in him. The Lions try to run later, and again, that's Marquis Starling. He's already making a big impact in the running game. Unfortunately, we could have used his tackling ability on this screen pass as Marvin Jones breaks the tackle of Prince of Mukamara, and he's off to the races. Touchdown, Detroit. Back to the Bears offense with Trubisky finding Harlan Regis. Remember, he has 96 speed. There are a lot of ways to use that. 
And then we go up top, and that's Adam Shaheen showing the ability I remembered back from year one when he made tough catches as a starter. I think that he's going to be just fine in that role now in his third season. Cam Meredith on the outside makes another good reception. And then fourth and inches. I wanted to see Joseph Brookins get the carry. He's big, he has speed, and some power, and he's able to muscle through contact to get the first down here. I knew I had to see more of Joseph Brookins, and when you give him a crease, his speed can create big plays, like you see right here with him finding the end zone. And with Benny Cunningham regressing after last year, I knew I had to consider if we should make a change. Later, the Bears trying to play some defense with Curry Peters on the outside. I don't have a lot of highlights for Peters in this, but he's going to start opposite of Mukamara. And he shows some recovery speed on this play and is able to break up the pass and nearly intercept it. Matt Stafford then going right down the middle against our linebackers and I am concerned outside of Marcus Calhoun who's going to be reliable in coverage. So if I had Brookins getting some carries I still had to see Benny Cunningham. He has more power than Brookins but he's not as explosive and I had to make sure I saw enough of them in this preseason. Harlan Reed just makes another catch, 4 for 40 in this game. And then rolling out and finding Paul Richardson, getting the ball to everybody here in the starting lineup. In the third quarter, we get Brookins a chance once again in the red zone, and he does the same exact thing. Two red zone touchdowns on the ground for second year running back Joseph Brookins. Later for the Lions in the third quarter, they have Matt Stafford firing complete to Golden Tate as he creates some separation. He beat Curry Peters there, and we're going to have to develop his coverage abilities. But on the next first down, this pass is incomplete. I'm not sure if Peters even got a hand on that. Hand off later, it's Benny Cunningham. And you can certainly see he's slowed down a little bit. He's also in the last year of his contract and about to be 30 years old. Harlan Regis comes across the middle and he makes another good play. His one weakness is catching traffic, but like I've mentioned, his route running ability and his speed allow him to avoid those situations. Joseph Brookins again showing his ability later on as he gets out to the 42. Not much left to go in this Lions matchup as we force a third down stop and that is Bryant Powers who makes the play against Kenny Galladay. We end up taking over, trying to break this tie, and there's Cunningham making the catch. Cunningham's been all around reliable for this team in the two years of this franchise. And then he makes the catch on the wheel route and gets us into Lion territory. Jordan Alleman getting some snaps now at quarterback to finish the game, and he starts out pretty well. There's Kendall Demons on the in. And then looking for a first down to get us into field goal range. Here's Alleman going across the middle to Aaron Singletary, the undrafted rookie tight end. Great catch in traffic. It sets up Matt Prater to hit a field goal to win the game against his former team in the preseason. Nice little finish to that one, and now we take it to game four. This is the one game that was not streamed, so this is all new stuff. And I got Aaron Singletary heavily involved in this game after helping us win that last one. Here for the defense, this is one of the worst plays of the entire preseason. Lamar Miller makes a cut and sprints past everybody. He put a move on Marcus Calhoun and Marquise Starling. This cannot happen when the games count. I'm not sure how often these two will play next to each other in this season. It depends on how far Starling can progress in coverage. But Starling, when it comes to running and chasing, I'm not sure there's anybody on this team that can do that job better than him. You're going to see his numbers after this game too. It was impressive. Andrew Leonard got a lot of this final preseason game as he finds Singletary underneath. The numbers are pretty bad here because those Texans defensive linemen were not very kind to us in the first quarter. We didn't really play a lot of our starters in this game at all. There's Singletary though once again getting some yardage. And then Joseph Brookins. An opening there uses that speed and turns second and 18 into third and short. Not bad. And imagine we wouldn't have seen any of this from Brookins had CJ Ross not have gotten hurt. We probably would have seen Ross make some plays, but instead, Brookins was able to make an impression. Here is Andrew Leonard throwing down the middle, and Kendall Demons 
he made a lot of plays that you just wouldn't expect him to make, especially in his first preseason. He's a speedy receiver, a raw route runner, yet he made all of these plays that you'd expect from a possession receiver. He outshined Tajay Sharp easily in my eyes. Then Aaron Singletary once again getting into the action and making a tough reception. Into the third quarter, it's Jordan Alleman on fourth and five. Gets time, fires complete, and Kendall Demons hangs on. We didn't have the deep accuracy or the time in the pocket to give him deep balls like I wanted to, but when we gave him these opportunities, he made the most of them. I was so impressed with Demons. This was a great pass breakup by Javante Black, another one of our cornerbacks trying to rise up the depth chart. And then an overthrow into the hands of DeAndre Houston Carson. He shows off his power, and if I didn't do a back juke right there, it's a pick six. I gotta stop doing that. Little more action here in this game, just a minute or so more of highlights. Jordan Allum in deep, and Marky Cole can't make the catch. He was a little inconsistent in this preseason, but the highs were very high. Here is some pressure later from LaBrice Pringley, one of my favorite rushes of the entire preseason. Just overpowered that left tackle and drove him into the backfield. We're going to a play action pass now as Allum floats one, and Demons like he did all preseason, makes the tough play in traffic. Alleman hands off to Brookins, and look at this speed. Most running backs wouldn't have made it past the first defender, but he turns that carry into an eight yard pickup. Then Alleman throwing on third and short, and we'll get Demons now a catch and run. I thought he'd be gone here, but number 41 there made a good tackle. Still impressed to see Kendall Demons make all these plays. We hand it off on fourth down to Benny Cunningham, and unfortunately, he gets stuffed. And that is the end of the preseason highlights. I thought there were a lot of rookies that made a great impression, and it was a fun preseason. Let me know down below who impressed you most in this preseason, and who deserves more playing time this year or a true role on the team. Leave your feedback below. Here are the stats. I came away very impressed with Andrew Leonard. His completion percentage wasn't great, but I thought he improved his play overall from last season. For the running backs, Joseph Brookins made the most of his opportunity with a 6.8 yard per carry, two touchdowns, while Benny Cunningham was under four yards per carry, and he doesn't have that same big play capabilities. In the receiving game, Harlan Regis and Kendall Demons, the two rookies, were great. Marquis Cole had some spectacular plays. I was also impressed with Adam Shaheen and Adam Singletary. Along the offensive line, we certainly struggled. And then the defense. Marquis Starling, 34 tackles, 5 for a loss, and 3 sacks. I plan to use him as a base 3-4 inside linebacker, and also in our double A-gap pressures because I think he can be a really good blitzer. We're going to use his athleticism and focus on developing the rest of his play as we move on. So at the end of preseason, we didn't have any more injuries beyond what happened in the first game. I did end up placing Alex Anzalone on the injured reserve so he wasn't taking up a roster spot. I was going to release him anyway. I also made a very tough decision and that was to release Benny Cunningham. After he led the backfield last year, it was hard to make this decision, but I think it was the right one for the team. And Joseph Brookins has taken his place on the roster. CJ Ross is also on the active roster as we wait for him to get healthy. And we'll figure out a running back rotation as the season moves on. Here were the final decisions with the practice squad signings and the last cuts. No major surprises here. Releasing Benny Cunningham was really the biggest surprise here at the very end. We didn't end up with a lot of undrafteds making the roster this year. Aaron Singletary was the only one. I was impressed enough with his receiving ability to keep him on the roster. He has very good hands. Here is the practice squad with Jordan Alleman making it there. We end up with two quarterbacks on the active roster. Cameron Crane and Diamond Mills are receivers on the practice squad. And no running backs because I think we have enough on the roster. One player I have added to the trade block is Nick Kwiatkowski. He's a good run defender in the last year of his contract, I believe, but obviously we're moving forward with Marquis Starling as one of our linebackers of the future. So that makes Kwiatkowski expendable. We'll see what offers come in. We open this season at home against the New York Giants. 
And they have a really good roster. I'm impressed with their defense. Of course, we're going to have our hands full covering Odell Beckham Jr., who's only 26 years old. Landon Collins on defense is one of the most all-around complete safeties. There's Damon Harrison, Olivier Vernon, Jason Pierre-Paul. I know that we're going to have to focus on getting the ball out fast against these defenders. Chantrell Bennett is a great running back. I think it's a great test for us. And Jimmy Garoppolo is their starting quarterback as the Giants look to move on from Eli Manning. Here is your starting lineup for the Bears in Season 3. I do think this roster is a lot better. I hope that we can stay healthy and have an even better season than we did in Year 2 when we finished 9-7. and seven. Let me know your thoughts on this team and Year 3 of the Bears franchise in the comments section. Thank you all for watching and supporting the Chicago Bears franchise. I will be debuting Season 3 of the series this Sunday with the Week 1 matchup against the New York Giants. Stay tuned for the Kalispell Dynasty this Saturday. I'll have the bowl game coming out before that. And I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.